So I'm Bruce K1BG. Uh, as everyone knows, uh, the Neshoba Valley Amateur Radio Club has an annual activity called Thinking Day on the Air. We've been doing this since 2015, maybe. Um, and this is a presentation that actually Skip originally uh, wrote up. I don't know if you gave this here or not. Okay, so this is, uh, Skip wrote this with uh, Jill KB1SWV, um, and it talks about Thinking Day on the Air. This is coming up on Saturday, so Thinking Day on the Air is a Girl Scout activity. It's uh, blessed and sponsored by all of the um, uh, top people, the World Association of Girl Scouts and Girl Guides, um, and, and that's... Uh, the Thinking Day, Thinking Day on the Air is uh, an amateur radio uh, a, event that's tied in with this. And uh, similar to Boy Scouts Jamboree on the Air, we get on the air, we introduce girls to the amateur radio and the technology involved and all those kinds of things. Um, QSL card from 2015, 2016, so I assume 2015 was the first year. We haven't done this since COVID. When was the last time we did this? 2019? So anyway, um, this is, I believe, 2016. This was a year when I think there were 80, 80 attendees. Um, this particular year, we did it at a... In a middle school in, Rain was it Raynham, New Hampshire? And in this particular school, we had separate classrooms, smaller classrooms. So generally what happens, and we'll talk more about this, we separate into four or five tables where there are activities going on, all of them somewhat related to amateur radio, some of them very specific amateur radio. Um, here's the participants in 2016. You can see 57 girls, uh, 27 leaders, 15 troops, nine towns, two states. Pretty, uh, pretty big event. I don't think we'll have anything close to that this year, but you never know. So I mentioned earlier that we have these different activities. We were setting up at that time with the tower, the tower trailer. Okay which, again, this is my personal opinion, I think it's a little bit of overkill for what we're trying to do. It's not as if, it's not as if we're in a contest. It's not as if we want to be the loudest signal on the band. We just want to make some contacts. And so rather than do the tower on the trailer, which requires a lot of overhead, I'm just going to throw a couple of inverted Vs up in the tree uh, in, front of the, in front of the meeting house. Um, so we set antennas up, we set a rig up, we have Morse code oscillators. Uh, in the previous ones, we've done communication between the rooms using FRS transceivers. This year, we're going to be in one massive meeting room with separate, separate tables, so I don't think we need to do that. But pretty typical. Um, set up, set up, take down, can do it all reasonably in a day. This particular year, we had three rooms. Um, so in the auditorium, uh, this is basically where we had um, the transceiver set up. We had the girls talking. Uh, we had one classroom where we had a crash table and a Morse code table, and another classroom where we had things like mapping and gray line, oh, and the station. And we talk about things like we have uh, a phonetics table so that the girls are prepared to get on the air using, they can give their names and phonetics, that kind of thing. Um, what's always interesting of these activities, which one do you think is the most popular? The Morse code is always by far the most popular activity with kids. Okay. I, I, think kids are inquisitive, okay? They like playing games, and to them it's a game. And I, I know all I have to do to amp them up is say, hey, how would you like to communicate with your friends in a way that your parents won't understand? Boom, okay? <laughs> that, that gets them going. 
I usually do the, the station operating, right? And so we'll talk to someone on SSB kind of thing. And then when we're done, I'll tune down to the bottom of the band. It's, it's interesting because it's always the same weekend as ARL DXCW, which I'm not really happy about. But, um, but anyway, I'll go to the bottom of the band and they'll hear all the Morse code going on. And I'll say, you know the Morse code table we had? You can talk to people using Morse code. That also gets them really excited. Okay. So anyway, um, recognizing a larger world, world map, gray line. This is the mapping, the mapping table. And mapping is in itself a really interesting science. Um, you know, trying to explain to people, most people don't understand that the maps they look at are not good representations of the globe. I, I remember the earliest space shots when I was a kid, when I was like six years old, I could never understand why the orbits weren't straight. You know, why, why they were a sine wave. And I kept thinking to myself, well, What's happening? Are these things like turning in space kind of thing, right? And, and again, you know, you have to like start visualizing those kinds of things, right? Um, and so it's really a, a good demonstration for the kids. Um, they learn about, about communications, sound, messages, technology, all of those kinds of things. Um, they have a related craft activity. I know what we're doing this year and we've done in the past is uh, the, the girls make brace bracelets and we have two different color beads and they wind up spelling their name in Morse code on the bracelet. Sounds like such an easy kind of thing, but they get really excited about this. And by the way, if they do the bracelet first, then they go and send on the Morse code table or if they go the other way around, they know a little bit of the Morse code or at least been exposed to it. So, what's that? Yeah, that that may be the net like the next step kind of thing. You know, one of the things we've never tried is doing a class after this, and I'm going to do a tech offer a technician class um, and see if see if we can build some excitement. So. Um, I know Skip's granddaughter, who's, Annika's what, like 16 or 17 then? So um, she's been doing this for, for a long time, and a lot of her scouts are really excited about this coming back again, but we never turned it into licensed amateurs, and I, I don't know why we never tried doing that, Skip. So, um, But anyway, it's another subject. Oh. I think that's coming up in this. So, and again, uh, this particular year, uh, uh, Anita AB1, is she AB1? I don't know what her call is. Her call is, it looks like AB1, AB1OB maybe? I don't know. I'm trying to look. QC? Anyway, um, she did the uh, phone this particular year. Um, so a little bit about the about the the planning. We're all planned and organized. You know, everybody tells me I'm worried about. It. Everybody says, "Oh, this is going to come off like you know, really great." Eh? Okay, but um, but anyway, the Girl Scouts do most of the organizing for this. And we kind of generally guide them in the right direction, give them the themes for the tables, what we plan to do. But they are rearranged for, you know, the, the hall and getting things organized and getting things set. So, um, yeah, this is, I think, skips more. Uh, try to promote this to other clubs, you know. Um, and I think uh, we're pretty much there. This is what we've done in the past. We set the, 
we have the tower access to the tower on the trailer. Um, in in my opinion, it's a it's a lot of overhead activity, and I'm not sure how beneficial it is. I could never do this. I could never do this myself, right? You know, so um, I want to try to get them comfortable enough to say, yeah, I can throw a wire in a tree and talk to people. Well, 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 I don't know who I, I don't know who will be watching this on the YouTube channel, but in my opinion, that kind of equipment is necessary. <laughs> But not, but not for somebody who's just getting interested in the hobby, right? So. Exactly. So, so I was, I was being facetious, but um, we want to try to keep it simple. And and look, I've done field days where, and recently, our recent field days have just been wire antennas. And it's been, it's gone really well. So I think this will go well as well. And by the way, you know, what's interesting is that here we have antennas, fan dipole for 80 and 40 meters, right? So um, the only problem with the school is there wasn't a flagpole or anything um, close by. I made sure where we are, there's some tall trees that are like right there. So we have plenty of places for putting, putting up antennas. Um, try to keep it simple, okay? Um, like field day, I think was Skip's point here. And um, spotting yourself is real important. It gets you put packet spots out. People see that you're you're there, and they'll they'll start swarming to you, calling you. And let the magic happen. Follow ups. Um, we will be doing a QSL at some point um, for this particular weekend, and the girls have already committed to getting together, sending QSL cards out. Uh, hopefully, they'll be in next year. We have enough patches for this year, right, Skip? Should be more than enough. Um, here, you can go read more about this on the on the World uh, Scouting page, here's the patch program that we were talking about, right? So this is something that the ARL um, and actually and Jill worked on, right? You know, putting this patch program together. Um, and um, yeah, so. Do they still have patches available? And there's a program for it. And this was Skip's presentation. These are people that participated back in 2016, 2015, 2016. So fair number of turnover since that particular time. And I think that's the patch you just had. This is the patch? <laughs> 